Hey, it's Isaac. I'm uh, doing video to uh, the Marquee acoustic guitar, uh, job number one. This will be video two of job number one. Um, let me show you the guitar. Um, over here I have uh, what I'm calling my magic bag of cleaning stuff. Um, anyway, another thing I didn't mention in the first video is that feeling around here inside this, um, it feels just a little dry, and I'll, I'll probably rig up a little uh, humidifying thing. So, because one of the uh, things that damages guitars is low humidity. It does more damage than pretty much anything else. Um, so, fretboard is really rather dry. So, um, I'm going to attempt to find some linseed oil as recommended by several people, including Davey4557. Um, if not, I have some uh, lemon oil product that I will use. Um, let's see what else. Um, uh, well, I guess uh, let's get started on the string removal and the cleaning. All right, so for the string removal, I have here one of the ubiquitous string winder slash unwinder thing. This is a Planet Waves brand. It's, it's pretty neato, but hard to do with just one hand to show you. Um, it actually has a string cutter so that when you change strings, you don't get the, uh, the good old hangy strings like uh, what my mom used to cuss at me for leaving everywhere. And also, this doesn't, you know, waste any of your other tools and uh, definitely not your mom's shears, which she will yell at you for. So, so. I didn't used to use these, I used to use my fingers, but this just makes it a hell of a lot easier to remove these strings. kind of hard to do, you know, one-handed. I'm trying to show uh, most of the steps of doing this, so bear with me. Okay, that one's good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, do the remaining five strings, and then I'll have to do another. The next part of the clip will be where I'm removing the actual strings from the bridge and then removing these little guys. Um, Speaking of nifty parts of this little guy right here, uh, it's hard to tell in this light with this crappy camera, but this little indentation here at the very end of this string winder is to actually remove these without having to use any sort of pliers. So, hold up. Another quick clip of these little guys. Um, this uh, the G string wind or tuner tuning pad. While unwinding it, it sounded like a dying um, mouse. So, and looking, it's really hard to see with this camera. But these are all insanely dirty. I mean, much like the rest of the guitar. Uh, and I see if this the B string tuner does the same thing. Hmm. Hard to keep balance with this thing. Yeah. Uh, half these strings, they, they wound correctly, by the way, where you had uh, multiple windings before the before you actually got it up to pitch. Um, and half of them they didn't like they have ADD like well I do and just lost interest in doing it the correct way halfway through 
But, uh, again, we don't know who the original owner of this guitar was. So, anyways, um, be back in a second. Okay, now that I've removed all the strings from the tuning pegs, have them sort of bunched up, and, uh, well, try to get the uh, string pins out. Um, hmm. Seemed like a like it was going to be a slightly harder job considering the angle of these things. You know, those of you out there who maybe sort of sort of new to it. Um, I'm, I'm no newbie to guitars or changing strings, but you know, to the whole repair thing, I'm, I'm kind of new. But never try to remove these things um, under string tension. I mean, that shouldn't be something you'd have to learn, but um, number one, it's a bad idea. Um, because Sometimes if they're already in here and they're already strung up, already under string tension, number one, they might stay in there anyway, which is, you know, against what you're trying to do. And then number two, now these things come out on their own without the string um, puller or string pin puller. And number two, if you do that, you're probably going to get popped in the eye if you take these out while there's still tension on them because that string will come up and hit you. And if it doesn't hit you, it'll cut into, you know, one of your hands or something. And while we can all agree that chicks dig scars, um, sometimes doing something stupid is not worth the story that you're going to tell the woman who asks how you got that scar. All right. So, strings are off. Um, it, real quick, I'm, I'm going to do a little something showing you how to get rid of all these strings. Um, at least a safe way that's not going to cause a whole lot of injury. Uh, all right, be right back. All right, here I have all the, the strings together. Um, so I'm going to see if I can put this camera somewhere where I can do this with two hands. Um, that's not going to work. Well, hmm. a stand would definitely be useful in this case. Unfortunately, it's just a camera phone, so what can I really do? Well, pretty much what I've done is, if you've ever taken a pack of, you know, you've gotten a fresh thing of guitar strings, you know how they are on the package. You know, they're sort of wrapped around each other, you know. So what I've done, I've just wrapped this entire set of strings around each other. Um, that way, they're, they're not poking out everywhere, and I can just dispose of them. There's my current string disposing bag thingy. And that way they, they don't poke out everywhere and aren't everywhere poking at people. Um, so there's that. All right, what I have sort of discovered in the meantime, here's the bridge. It's still on here. It's still technically glued. And it moves back and forth. Which means that we've got a bit of distension under here, it's, it's really hard to show it, um, particularly without any sort of zoom on this piece of crap. So that means we've got some, the, the part of the guitar under the bridge has raised up a little bit and has unintentionally turned this, sorry, has unintentionally turned this 
into kind of an arched out guitar, which is, uh, I kind of understand why it would do this, because number one, it's it's too dry, and number two, um, it has sat in storage in crap conditions for some time. So what I'm going to have to do a little later is get a scraper and remove this bridge. Um, I'm also going to have to get some form of steam to get under there to remove it because it is not technically attached. This looks like it. And these these landlines, I don't think they are attached to anything. I don't think. Um, so, what, uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, clean all of this, uh, mainly because it needs it. Um, the pit guard shows lots of scratches, which really isn't much concern to me. Um, yeah, this fretboard is not only dirty but dry. A um, little bit of hump there where the fretboard meets the body, which is to be expected, especially with the string tension on. Um, and I suppose I should take this truss, cover rod, truss rod cover off and see if the truss rod works. Um, so let's uh, let's get on that. All right, guys. So I got my inspection mirror and flashlight looking inside the guitar. Um, I you can see that real well. Uh, let me get this set up a little bit. Um, see there, the, the lighter colored stuff you see down there is the bridge pad, which when you're constructing a guitar is put just under the bridge um, to help uh, with the string tension, you know, because it's, you know, considerable amount of torque um, coming up from the strings, you know. It's the reason that the neck has the truss rod. Well. Anyways, I don't know if you can tell real well, and back there, you can see the string holes, and the string holes are just past where the bridge pad are. Um, and, well, it kind of defeats the purpose of the bridge pad if it's not helping ease some of the tension. Um, of the bridge. See some really sloppy glue work in there too. Yeah, move it over just a little bit. Um, right there, you can see. I guess I was incorrect yesterday when I said that uh, that the bridge had no nuts that went through, or these inlays are right here. Um, so that, that's part of what's keeping the bridge on right now are those nuts. Um, which really to me just is sloppy, sloppy work. I and mean, this is this is made in Korea, just off an assembly line, so I don't expect, you know, a Martin guitar kind of thing. Um, hold on just a second. I'm gonna take a look at the hill block in this guitar. It's um, right there, sort of slanted piece of wood. Piece of wood you see the mirror's looking at. I don't really think that was part of the original guitar. Um, 
kind of particle board looking thing. It looks like it was uh, some sort of shoddy repair of some sort um, at the neck. I mean, it could be why the neck is so straight. Uh, I see glue residue all over it. Um, I don't know whether it's either this guitar has been previously repaired or attempted to be repaired or um, that was just part of the original really crap construction. So, anyways, that, that's that's all for examining the guitar, really. Um, oh, uh, one one other thing. I don't really detect much of a radius here. As a matter of fact, this is almost, almost as flat as my classical guitar, which has no radius whatsoever. Um, so that explains to me why the bridge saddle is so flat, except for the indentations where the strings were. All right, well, I had intended to just make the, the cleaning one the second video, but um, I'm going to stop this video right here and do cleaning as part three. So this is video part two. Um, second part of the examination of the guitar as well as removal of strings. So I'll catch you later.